being modeled when you were here last. Stand by for a second, we'll save this and then we'll carry on as soon as we're launching the Facebook Live. Looks like we're there. Hey, Facebook, what's happening? Yeah, we're good to go now. All right, so that being said, we're... Um, Oh, this is a special show. We're broadcasting you. Well, I'm still where I am, but you are on site in South Correct. Carolina, in Rock yes, Hill. Yes, I'm, I'm upstairs in the corner room in the stone house. Uh, when I shut those windows, I was overlooking Nines Green. This, uh, so like I was saying, when you were here last. Nines Green, okay. I'm okay, so this is, this is the house that's out by the tennis center, out on Eden Terrace. And it, this was also the house that Stevie Rigo threw underneath. In one of the many rules, con controversial rules, determinations that's always always seems to take place at this event. So that that house got remodeled years since you've been here, probably about half the time ago, and it's they use it for a variety of different things, that, you know, receptions for the school and everything's like that, meetings and whatnot. And then it's also available for people who rent out the whole facility, as we have. And now we run the whole event from this house, basically. Once once things come on site, you know, obviously Jonathan's working from the beach where he lives in Polly's Island and um, year round on the event. And then as it comes around time, then we, uh, excuse my phone, we he moves his operation to here. So uh, keep it going for a second. Let me go grab Sarah. She's downstairs. Okay. So this is, as I say, uh, as Mace Man said, a special broadcast of uh, Mace, the, the Good Times Hour with Mace Man and Mr. B. Um, I am your host, co-host, Mr. B. Uh, that was Mace Man, who just left the room, getting our special guest. Uh, we're very excited to be able to talk to uh, Sarah Nicholson, the CEO of, and co-founder of Throw Pink. They're having the uh, Throw Pink Women's National Championships or you know, national is part of that title officially, but the championships, the Throw Pink Championships are happening this week, starting up. And uh, it's a very exciting time to be in, um, in Rock Hill at Winthrop University. Anybody who's never been to Winthrop University grounds, uh, it's just, it truly is a magnificent, this golf um, complex. I mean, it, it's a university grounds, a very sporty based university, but the, the course and the setup and everything this is the 24th year for the USDGC, and they've really grown in organically into the into the compound. And um, it's amazing that they're able to have two on-site locations: the Stone House, and then the main the main place where uh, one number one starts. And they have the the shot collar, and and um, they have the merch store and everything. It's uh, it's just an exciting ferment to be in that area now. And we're looking forward to a little more presence. Look who I found. Oh, look who is this? Yo, all right. <laughs> all right. Hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm Mr. B, nice to meet you. Um, now we, for all of our guests, we do a special introduction. So please just sit back for a second while I do my thing. Ladies and dandies, please welcome to the tea our next special guest, the woman with the most living her best life on the coast. She's on the right side of posterity, teaching the world to think pro and throw pink, to dream global and work local. She's a force of nature, a human dynamo of dynamic positivity, spreading the good times and the great vibes through love and laughter and disc golf. Her resume is long and varied and is the cornerstone of her success. From personal care for those on their own to guarding the bears of Jellystone, from boo-boos to honey badgers, this ranger has seen danger and splendor. Every day truly is a good day to have a good day. On the tee, please put your hands together for Sarah Nicholson. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, he's he's definitely for hire. <laughs> <laughs> I do that uh, the Toronto Island Maple Leaf tournament we have uh, here in Toronto on the island, as is beautifully abundant. Um, I do that for everybody. I, I do three days of intros for everybody and they go from nice to bad to positively awful and I roast them on the tee. So that was the nice right there. Yeah. Welcome, Sarah. Great to have you on board. Thanks for sparing some time. I know you're super busy right now in advance of everything, but thanks for coming and sitting down with us and we want to talk about a few things. Oh. 
No worries, let me turn that up. Are you having difficulty hearing me? Yeah, but it's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. That's why I have my life. <laughs> okay, so, you know, we, one of the, prim obviously, the primary reason we wanted to have you as a guest is that you've got an event that's in its second year starting in a couple of days, a lot, right alongside the, the men's event too. And we just want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what's coming up in the event, what you're excited about, what should everybody be excited about, and what are people going to see? Oh, man. Well, you know, everything is better time, right? So, online in the second year, it's better than online. It looks good. It looks just made. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, this year, I think the championship alone has added so many more uh, women components. Uh, we've got uh, women that are about to see off for the first time at the USMC Apples event. We have women that have already qualified in. Um, and as uh, we said, we're in our second year of the FBO. These are women on uh, one of the biggest stages in this off. So add that to the clinics we're running. Uh, it's now our ninth year. Um, and then uh, If it, and if you don't get it yourself, then it's going to touch you, your life in some way or another. You know, as uh, I can attest with my father fighting brain cancer right now, but uh, also we have a very close friend, my brother and I, uh, there in, in Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, Melissa Cowles, who's fighting breast cancer, and it's been an on again, off again battle for her for 11 years. And you know, I'd kind of just like to make an appointment with a truck or a bus, you know, step off the curb, the truck's going at least 40, 50 miles an hour, <laughs> take care of everything and get it out of the way. But yeah, yeah. that's a really tough situation. And if you haven't been through it yet, you're you're rare and you're very lucky, but it definitely will have its effect on your life, whether it's touching you directly or touching someone very close to you. So, so that being said, um, so what's going to go on this week with the ladies here on this event? I'm, I'm kind of not quite up to speed personally, but is are y'all teeing off, the ladies teeing off first every day? Yeah, ladies teeing off first every day. Um, I'm actually two separate broadcasts with, you know, different, um, you know, commentators in each one. Um, so just, you know, trying to keep that clear and keep the fans following along. The women will tee off in the morning and then the tee off will be in the day. Um, the competition side of things, uh, you know, aside from just, that's been doing for 24 years is it's very uh, much the same, but we're just going to make the same better. That's kind of, that's kind of what we do when we build on it. Just kind of, you know, just enjoy it for years. I give you the best of the group of experts to make the women's championship. The qualifier event, um, we're going to have the qualifier of the year, and it's just about showcasing. The women on the line of stage in the team off, um, give them a great pay off, go into their off season that they deserve and go into the final year. Um, it's only a, I say only a few, and it's an eight year, and I have a TVJ, but we treat it like a major because the women deserve. Well, and it's under the same umbrella, and I've heard a lot, I've heard ladies say this, um, and, but, it, you know, what's the difference? I mean, yeah. Maybe that's a point, some points difference after the fact, but like while you're here, I don't think you're getting treated any differently. No, no, absolutely not. And that's definitely one of the things that like, you know, the U.S. women started here, and in all honesty, we weren't doing a great job of taking care of them. You know, I mean, it would, to me, in, in my opinion, 
at the time, I felt like it was a really good move to allow that to go away or to give that away. Whatever exactly happened, I wasn't involved in that decision, obviously. But I really felt like I felt bad as a staff member. And I was like, man, we're just not, we're not, we weren't in a position to do it properly. You know, I mean, we took it on and we had great intentions. But when it came down to it, you know, it, it wasn't getting the attention that it deserved. And so it went away and it, and it bloomed and it blew up. And it's been, it's quite an event now. And, and, and I think that's really good. And it's nice that we brought something back and, and it's not just a men's event now that, you know, we've given an opportunity. And oh, I would imagine at some point they'll figure out a, a way around that second major or that odd number of majors towards the women as opposed to the men. So how many, how many women do you have signed up? Um, there's 41 signed up right now. Uh, we did extra qualifiers this year. We ended up actually qualifying a little bit over our 40 mark because we want to be able to enter the international race and get them a chance. Uh, so that actually pushes over to that 40 mark and raised the name of the speech. Sure. So we'll end up with 42. We'll be one of the first women to qualify on Monday. Nice. Well, that's good. And, you know, that's one thing. I, I'm i still kind of lost because I was gone for so long, as a, certainly as a player, um, you know, not as a fan, but I've been trying to pay attention a lot more. And one of the things that I check on every event is what the ladies' total is. And the ladies, uh, on most of these pro tour events, the ladies have been getting between 40 and 50, and that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Because for the longest time, it was three, you know, or two, or one, you know what I mean? Like, I... I stayed with, a, I don't know if you were ever acquainted with a, with Liz Acosta. Her last name's Pearson now, but she had a company called Disc Golf, her old, old oh, friend yeah. of Paul and I both. And I stayed with her this summer and she told me this horror story about how her and one other lady, they were the, the open division and they got lumped with the, with the juniors. And the juniors on the second hole, one of them decided he didn't want to play anymore. And the other one decided, hey, that's a great idea. And so they just took off. Yeah. And at the end of the round, they come in and these mothers come in of these two juniors and they're like, where are our kids? And this is like, I don't know. I wasn't here to babysit your kid. Well, they were on your car. Why did you just let them take on? He's like, she's like, I wasn't here to babysit your kid. You know, I was here to play my tournament. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a story. I'm sure the mother doesn't think that's a great story at all, but it's, you know, it's a good story that really needs to be told because that kind of stuff happens. You know, I've, I have to admit that I've done that before as a tournament director, you know, oh, well, we'll just, it's a, it's a, and you don't even think about the underlying thing, but it's a small division and a small division, you put them together and the ladies are like, I'm not here to babysit them kids. That's not why I came out today. I'm not even here to babysit my boyfriend or my husband. I'm playing by myself. You know what I mean? And, and, and so <clears throat> that's, you know, that was one of those things where, uh, I, you know, Liz told me that story this summer and I was just like, wow, I never even thought about that scenario, but it's, you know, it's gotten kind of better than I've ever started as the same situation. When they, the teenagers have put, a, put their kids with the women in the cup left and we were anchored. So we always enjoyed the women in the cup left. And they were the Well, all you had to do was eat a child in one of those situations, and then they, that would have ended yeah. immediately. Yeah, I mean, now we come a long way. I actually think that 60 women are really going to be here. And we're going to be looking to make a lot of space on numbers. And so no more women that need to be here. Now, it's just, you know, unfortunately, the women. We just can't pull off. I think it's, you know, fair to men and fair to women and fair to staff and trying to get this together. My goal is to have more people and more women absolutely here to be here. Well, and that's the thing, too. That, you know, there's a lot of that's happened. That's been said. There's been a lot of people that have said, "Oh, those people don't deserve to be here." But it's but but that's a very narrow perspective, you know. And you look at it, and you know, a lot of the pros used to say that same thing about the promoters that would get the sponsor suggestion for running the event that was a qualifier, and and then um, those people would learn from what they saw here, and they'd go home and they bring it, you know, and and that's really what it it hasn't just gone out in one specific spot, meaning like things that we've done here over the years went, you know, towards what's being seen at the pro tour. It goes all the way out. It ripples out the ripple effect into, you know, small town USA from this golf perspective is really, I think it, it really has made an effect and made, and put a, 
put a positive turn on everything, you know, and like, how do you, how are they doing? Oh, I'm going to do that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have told me, oh, well, I'm going to rip this place off. And I'm like, you don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, you know, yeah, sure, man. People will come out and volunteer. And I was like, first of all, that's, that's going to be a tough one. But then do you realize how much rope you're going to need? Do you realize how many times we bought out the Home Depot and the Lowe's here in town and yellow rope back in the day when that was the way we handled it, you know, and, and, it, and it's, it, it, you're right. I mean, it, they do deserve it. They deserve the same treatment and I'm glad to see it happening. So um, I, I looked on your website, uh, Throw Pink, and last year you had uh, 39 women. So you got more this year. Um, are the top three going to be still there? Are you going to have some kind of ceremony beforehand to talk about last year? Or do we like, what's, what's your approach when you, you're the TD, right? You're going to lead the, the players meeting. What's oh, uh, but I will be on the stage because we will be honoring uh, Missy Gannon, our uh, returning champion this year, and I don't want to be a part of that in the, in the non-speaking role. <laughs> non-speaking role. Yes, but it's, yeah, I'm very much excited. It's our first returning champion. Super pumped about it. We got a special trophy now, um, and so I want to be up there for them. And so, you, what your approach this week? Are you going to be? stuck in the house or on site or are you going to be able to get out onto the course as well like are you going to have interaction with the players during the event well i have about seven so uh it's part of i, I work for team but i'm also the employee so part of my employee duties i will have shifts that i have to work with i'm sure they're pretty tough um and i call them at the week 10 where i'll be doing games and practices uh so i'll be part of all here up there and also working in the tent myself uh, also, we doing some social media coverage, um, so we'll be able to see a little bit of that from uh, with that. And then I'll be getting a fair amount of time to do some of the clinic on Saturday. Um, and also answering all the emails and helping people that take like me because of that like leadership piece. So I think, you know, if I could pull off a 50 on our day, that would be a easy one. <laughs> That's how those days go this time of year, though. This whole week is just stuff for everybody. Yeah, well, and we'll have screens out there as well in that vendor village. That's one of the things that, you know, her, the activity in her tent, the activity in our Mace Man tent, and then all around too. I mean, that's definitely one of the areas where we're trying to drive the vibe hard and just keep it going the whole time. And there's, it's, there's a lot. To, there's so much to do out here. I mean, you're going to see, you can see some of the best men, some of the best women, um, and just catch up with all kinds of people. If you're, if you're an old school golfer, um, the, the, it's just amazing out here, the place. And then we got all this rain, so it's going to be lush and green like tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, it already seems a little greener today than it did yesterday. So, or well, two days ago, but yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what, what happens next. So, Sarah, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but um, when do you start the planning for next year? Are you already thinking kind of next year, just a little part of your brain? Yeah. I mean, you've got to have the long vision, right? Well, you got to make sure we don't do that next year. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely already know what the picture is. We just talk about quickly next year and go, we can laugh and go, and don't do this again. So, yeah, it's all always in order. Nice. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, though. It's it's kind of hard to hear you. I've been trying to get Mace's attention subtly with this. Is okay. there any way we can... Uh, is, is your mic unidirectional, Mace? Well, as far as I know, but I'm not... I'm a lighting guy. You're, you're coming in extremely clear, but I'm I'm missing some fragments from Sarah. I don't know. I know. Am I... Does that make it any better? Hold on. Let her talk. Can you hear me now? Okay. That's a lot better. What did you yeah. do? It's because he was hogging the microphone. It was all on this side. Uh, the lighting so guy. He knows how to hog the mic. Yeah, for sure. The lighting guy over here. But the light is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> he nailed it. 
<laughs> well, I know you're, you're, you say you're not much of a public speaker, but you are quite a, a, a an Instagram selfie uh, pro, <laughs> 1100 rated. It's a, your, your, your private Instagram account, first of all, is, or your personal, I should say, is, is a wonderful look through uh, just another disc golfer in the grips of their, their frenzied pursuits, you know, the passion is, is strong and real and, and your own character, you've got a lot of character that comes through and it's really, so anybody out there definitely follow throw pink, follow Sarah Nicholson. It's, um, it's, it's another disc golf journey. That's wonderful to watch. Thank you. That uh, oh, he's handsome as ever. <laughs> <laughs> Louie, is that short or is it just Louie? It's Louie. It's short for Lewis and Clark because uh, Lewis and Clark National Park. <laughs> I just never got him a Clark, so he's just Louie all alone. <laughs> you might have to get Louie a sibling. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of national parks, you are a winner of the um, Foothills Trail Conservancy Peregrine Award. You're very much passionate about first of all, outdoor activities, but second of all, conservancy and, and, and particularly walking the land is a very important way to reestablish connection with, with the world. One gets a sense of, of serenity coming from you. Um, how, how important is that award to you personally? Oh, I mean, it's incredible. It really, it really means a lot to go out there and drew hike, solo drew hike, um, you know, in the middle of the woods and no connection for five days with another human being, um, no social media. I mean, I recommend it, you know, to anyone that feels comfortable to do something like that, even if you just go camping for a night, you know, and just disconnect, um, you'd be surprised at the peace and the, you know, serenity that that can bring you. Um, we we grew up, you know, hiking as a kid, and then I worked in Yellowstone National Park for many years, so protecting our parks uh, is very important to me. Yeah, definitely taking that that view of conservancy and stewardship uh, is important, and and taking us away from the idea of ownership as well. Uh, you know, we we owe a duty of obligation, just as much as we get to receive the fruits of of you know, of the of nature as well. So, uh, you know, your you, your whole philosophy comes through strong, and it's really a privilege just to be able to read that and 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 to be reminded about that because it's super important. You know, we live in a world of instant gratification, instant communication instant everything and to, to just go back to circadian rhythms and go back to how nature actually unfolds on a slow but methodical process. I think we can live our lives that way, right? Yeah, exactly. But it's not probably not very easy for you. You're you're busier than I've ever seen anybody's LinkedIn profile being busy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you wear so many hats and still manage to, to wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night, really. Yeah, yeah I don't know me either. It just kind of happens. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine they're in order, but they don't seem to come in. <laughs> so, uh, as the promotions and special initiative coordinator, um, other than Throw Pink and WGE, what else has Innova got you doing uh, on a daily basis? Yeah, so if you're running a tournament and you are looking for sponsorship from Innova or player packs or support of any kind from us, all those orders come to me. And then I also get the stuff like we get churches and Boys and Girls Club and just different community initiatives that will reach out and be like, hey, we're looking you know, for some support or we want to start this golf in our community. All of those initiatives come to me. Uh, so basically, if it's not just like an actual dealer like sales order, I get I get all those headed my way. So and the pandemic made that that load, I mean, which is awesome, like really explode. There's so many people that are interested in implementing disc golf in their community now. Right. So it's it's really incredible, yeah. And are so many orders, so many uh, requests coming in that do you have to prioritize things, or how do you how do you sort through it all? Because it sounds like every if you're the only point person, you probably got a, a huge backlog of. Requests. Oh yeah, oh it was getting kind of crazy. Um, but the sales team came in just recently, and now when I get super like just backed up, I'm like I kind of delegate here or there to kind of get a few things off my plate. So I'm lucky to to finally get a team there. Uh, behind the sponsorship initiatives because it's just it's gone kind of crazy you know with all that and it's not like a simple like here you go here's your order it's kind of like well what are you doing how can we better help you i mean it's a each one is a very long you know conversation to try to get them what they need um, that will best benefit their community you know and you get to make those decisions alone yeah they're nice. crazy i know call me i give away free stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see how much longer i have my job but yeah they, they <laughs> let me do it uh, they're crazy <laughs> now, did, 
do people have to be running uh, sanctioned events or is this available for anyone who's pushing disc golf promotions in any direction? Yeah, not through my program at all. Like I, I work with a lot of just, you know, local people that are trying to get it, you know, just in their community or they, they run an after school program or just any, any kind of thing. It, especially I like my heartstrings are especially pulled by people that are raising money for charities or are trying to get kids or senior citizens involved in the, in the game because I think it really helps extend your life. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to start teaching a clinic here in Rock Hill. Um, it's a weekly one uh, for, for the, the local senior citizens to get them out playing because uh, it's such a good way to stay healthy and active. So yeah, if you want free stuff and you're doing something like that, it's usually always a yes from me. <laughs> uh, what's the process like the, is there a website portal that that has an application form or do they just contact you directly through email or yeah phone? well i've been trying to work on that we uh we got a lot going on on the end of a website so i'm hoping to like kind of get that streamlined sometime soon because that would be very helpful um, i have my own little like form that i made that if you reach out i'll send you and then i'll get the questions from you um, from there and then that way i know what you're looking for and help streamline the conversation but yeah, basically now it's just kind of kind of back and forth. Let's talk about it kind of situation. That is a long process for you then. I mean, it's great that you get to be so engaged and you get your direct connections to people, but it takes that, that takes a while for it all to happen then, right? Eh? So <laughs> yeah, if, someone, yeah. if someone is thinking about something next year, like what kind of lead time would you su suggest before getting in contact with you and then when the event is? Yeah, I mean, as soon as you can, the better really. But a lot of these people are brand new to the game, so they don't understand time frames and I'm half the time I'm educating them on you know running an event scoring and like just the best way to do maybe you should do doubles or maybe you just do a fun clinic so a lot of them are just like hey we want to do something in disc golf what can you do so I mean it's a lot of education which is is cool that is I mean obviously you're very good at education and spreading spreading the light spreading the love and, and so that's <laughs> sound like you're absolutely the perfect per person for this position totally thank you tell them to give me a raise and I just want to say in terms of throwing <laughs> pink, I don't know if you can see this. Um, yeah. I got this I pink, oh, pinky oh. LaRue. Yeah. Right there. That's, there's still only a little bit of pink left in the center. It's, that's where my <laughs> thumb normally goes. I got this at 2007 USDGC, and that's oh. been my only putter since then. So I've been throwing pink for a lot longer than it's been officially around, but big supporter right here. Well, that's awesome. I actually started playing disc golf in 2007. So the, this, that kind of aligns. So that's nice. Yeah. There you go. Nice. <laughs> and so uh, when you're thinking about, you know, what's the next stages or just in your mind when you're thinking about what, where can we take it to the next level? What, what's, what's, how do you dare to dream big? Oh man. I mean, I think it's to, for me, I try not to get, because I have so much going on. I try not to get ahead of myself and I'm just trying to keep going, but I would love to see a throw pink event in every single state and in every single country, you know, I'm shooting for the States first. I've got like 14 left to get, but mm -hmm. I mean, Throw Pink can do so much for bringing women and young girls into the game. And then we raise money for local charities. So if every state has something like that. I mean, the, to me, that's, you know, it's not this big grandiose, like shooting for the moon dream, but it's, I think that's incredible. We could help everyone across the nation and then hopefully soon, you know, the world. And I guess that's my big, like, cause I know that what we're doing is wonderful and the more people I can get behind it, helping me do it then the more of an impact that we can make. So you know, it's, I don't have these crazy dreams. I guess I'm a little bit slower and more logical with, and, and, you know, just meticulous with my, with my planning, but I mean, I, I'm not ready to stop anytime soon. And have, do you have any events in Canada? Has anybody in Canada reached out to you for anything? Yeah, we, we had one up in the Yukon, actually. That one was really crazy. Shipping was quite a nightmare there. So working on some new plans for next year for that. Um, but yeah, we've got some ladies up there doing some leagues and some, some other stuff. Um, we haven't had any like really big events up there, but we have Christy Shields over um, on the BC side of things, and she's really killing it for us. So cool. yeah. Anybody here in Ontario and Toronto that we need to, to notify or or conversely, if someone is paying attention right now, how do they reach out to you and say, hey, I want to throw a WG or a throw pink event here? Yeah, I mean, there's a contact form on the website or if you will, you know, so go to throwpink.com or if you want to be more intimate, like I'm available, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook Messenger. Um, Sarah at throwpink.com is my email. Um, I will, if you reach out in any avenue, I will respond. So. Well, here in Toronto, there's uh, just this 
this is the second year that they've had a Toronto Women's Disc Golf League. And I mean, we're, we're, we've been typical of pretty well everywhere in the world where you ha you've got two or three women playing at each event and, and it, it starts slow and usually it takes a pro level or top level advanced woman to do the work, put in the, to make the league happen. You know, it's, it's quiet times at the beginning. It's hard. You get a few people each week and then slowly the momentum builds. And that's where we're getting, I think we're getting about 12 women per week coming out to these courses and like that just for me that i've been running tournaments since 1997 and that's huge to see and it's amazing wonderful growth so i'm going to make sure that poppy or one of the other women get in touch with you okay yeah that'd be awesome that seems to be that's one of the things that um it's almost easy to lose track of that too if you think back to like all the events that i played as as a player you know like i stopped playing this event in nine in at the seventh one so what oh six and you know oh six oh seven oh eight i kind of lost interest in playing tournaments but i remember like it was the same song and dance all the time it was like there'd be one pro women there might be two others and it comes and goes it's kind of an ebb and a flow but it sure seems like once you get past that bump in the road like there there's so many events that are having eight or ten women now where <clears throat> and then you know obviously we talked about at the beginning of the show that the, the pro tours pulling you know 40 to 50 every week and and you know that's nice to see that that momentum finally shift in the right direction i just um i don't know sometimes i wonder if women really even care you know i mean i know and it's not that you guys don't care it's like it's like there's so many i mean there's half, half men half women in the world right more or less and and it just seems like women aren't as interested in this and i don't know what it is that we can do but i mean i'm definitely interested in figuring that out but what is it we could do to try to make them, you know, bring them, bring a bigger crowd? Yeah, but I know? mean, you have to also, you're comparing our, like, our chapter two to your chapter 45. I mean, it's just in That's recent recent years that, you know, we've really started been making an effort to get women involved. I mean, the way I remember it, um, from talking to some of the ladies that have been around for a while, used to have all these divisions for men. And then we just have this one division for women called women, you know, so like these like little simple detail things that we're actually starting to pay attention to now is what's growing the women's side of things sure. and then getting more women in leadership roles so that more women can see women doing it is mm -hmm. getting more women playing the tele the televising the women that they she can see it she can be it that whole campaign so i mean yeah we are just about 30 years behind you guys um and then you know in the recruitment and and just the go globalized like you know showing women that this is actually for you too and not just a bunch of old guys in the woods together which is what we you know people thought you know back in the day that's not for me those old dudes are out there doing that uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then you know one thing i always try to tell the pj and then you know all the manufacturers like you, you cannot compare the women numbers to the men numbers because we haven't had as long as you have to catch up and yeah, that's a good perspective that's that right there alone, you know, that, that, that helps a lot. Just knowing that, like thinking about it like that, I never thought about it like that until you pointed that out. And, you know, sometimes you, a lot of times I say this all the time, you're not going to, you're not going to know to think that way until someone tells you to. And so there you go. Thank you. And certainly for me, I, both as a tournament director, a long time, but also just someone interested in the growth of the sport. I always wondered, I, I thought about ultimate and how ultimate why are there so many more women playing ultimate than potentially playing disc golf? And, and part of it is, I imagine there's, there's the team aspect to it. Um, but I think beyond and, and before all that was, there was a, a, a specific construction where you had to have co-ed teams and you had to have female women participation. And I thought that drive to go out, you know, not only find the best available ones, but to start developing, starting at lower levels. And I, and I see spe specifically with throw pink, you, you have, you know, FJ tens, that are that are playing and that that is truly remarkable because if we can keep them if we can get them interested at an early age the chances are pretty high that they're going to stay into it and, and develop into a good player so for me personally i think focusing on youth programs youth initiatives and 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 you know youth-based events or at least including them in larger numbers um so you guys have just been it's we're if you guys are 30 years behind here in canada we're about 30 years behind the state so <laughs> Uh, we're looking at what you guys are doing and we're like really really excited about it all yeah yeah and you know you nailed it with the team aspect too with, with ultimate you know and that's why we started the third pink women's team event this year um and we normally i have like 60 to 70 women in my singles competitions i had 120 women 
uh, that signed up for this event. 30 teams, like they came from all over, 11 states uh, to come down. And I've had tons of women uh, reach out to me that are they want to play next year. And it's four person teams. Um, so four ladies on the team and they come out. It was modeled after college disc golf and people are excited. There were so many women. It was their first event. And wow. yeah, and they just the women were just begging them to play because they did, they needed a fourth and they played because they wanted to be there with their friends. So it's very much gives that kind of ultimate vibe of I'm a part of a team, so I'm going to be there, you know. So, so tell, like, tell a little bit more about that because I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, I know about the collegiate event just that it happens. I don't really know about the team aspect of that. Yeah, yeah. And break that down a little bit because that's very interesting. Well, it's cool. I mean, it's really cool. So it's four four women, um, and then basically it's like uh, best shot doubles but as a team so like two two women are you know the odd teams so they tee off on hole one and then the other two will, will pick which shot they want from there and throw two shots up from there so you have eight women on a card at one time oh, wow. so two teams on a card so it's so i mean but it, it doesn't move slow like you think mob golf moves slow because you're playing best shot you know with with two options for for each shot and but it brings the camaraderie together. Acerun actually did a video um, on it that's really cool. If you want to check it out, that talks about the event, just shows like how amazing uh, you know it was for all the ladies that were there. I I think playing with the the traditional boundaries of what we thought as you know disc golf structures, that is an amazing advancement. And I can see imagine I could just imagine the laughter and the cackling from each of these eightsomes because you know when when you do play mob golf everybody's having a good time for the most part just people are kind of a little may, maybe miffed at how slow it goes but if it's moving and it's fun and yeah. and you know that's yeah, the other uh, thing well, about being, as long as it's not dragging oh, no, I mean, they, they were like hour and a half rounds 18 wow. holes i mean it wow. was you know because you're taking the best shot you can throw the garbage shot away so that helps it move a lot faster yeah absolutely <laughs> and you are still quite involved with ultimate as well are you not yeah, we play. We, it's I'm like a rec ultimate player. I did things backwards from the rest of the world. I played disc golf first, then I found ultimate. Most people find disc golf, you know, when their knees start getting bad. So I, you know, I think I'm like grandmaster's age in the ultimate community. Uh, so I just play like a yeah. Because once I think once you're over forty, you're grandmaster at ultimate. But um, yeah, I'm old. And so I just play in this little, uh, this little rec league here, but we, it, we have so much fun I and mean, we actually practice and we, you know, we really care about it, but it is definitely like old adult people that are just trying to have a good time. <laughs> well, but, you, have a, you have an end of a team as well. Yeah. Yeah. I play with the end of the team. Yeah. For the, for the longest time, at least from my understanding, um, this craft kind of had the lock on the ultimate world, but the, I, I see through in the end of a, program and it looked like Anna kind of was for a long time back in the day kind of thought of ultimate as a bit of a throwaway category disc golf was their main thing but is Innova kind of catching up a little bit more in terms of presence and branding in the ultimate world oh yeah as far as I know the Innova family very much cares about ultimate I mean that's how Harold started and his brothers they all played ultimate together um you know, I don't know, I don't want to get too much into the politics of things, but it's my understanding that like our, they want to prove our disc for, for ultimate competition. Uh, USA Ultimate want to prove it. Um, so we, I mean, we sell tons of, of Ultimate Frisbees. We all play, we push it, we market it. We have a separate logo for it. Like we, we love it. So it, um, I don't know, uh, I don't really know what's happening in the actual professional Ultimate world, but, but we absolutely, it's, it's definitely not, something that we don't love in, in the family so that's certainly one thing i noticed right from the beginning of covid was uh, the lt fields were shut down and some old school golfers <clears throat> kelly muller um they were very uh, not very welcoming of the new crowds of people coming in and for me it's just two sides and two branches of family and and i love it because we're all throwing frisbees right let's, let's yeah, be honest, yeah. we can call them discs and all but they're still circular toys that were in the park playing and i just i just love seeing the ulti players come over and they're like, wow, this is a fun game. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. The more the merrier, right? It makes us all better. High tide floats yeah. all the boats, right? Yeah. I guess I shouldn't use any flooding metaphors right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Florida. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, sorry. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just a personal side question. Bear with me for a sec, Mace. One of your uh, Instagram photos, you're with, I think, fishing with Isaiah, and he was wearing a uh, red T-shirt to the old Dungeons and Dragons box score. Oh, box. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
first of all, I just have to say I'm an old school geek and I just, I had that box set. I geeked out <laughs> on it for years. So double thumbs up approval on that for sure. Well, good. I'll send him to you because I come home and he starts talking about that stuff and my eyes glaze over and I'm trying to understand what he's talking about. I'm trying to be supportive and then I'll Google it later to try to understand it and then I understand it less. So you just I, have to watch Stranger Things. That's all. <laughs> I will give him your number when he wants to go around. <laughs> so what's uh, what's the next stage? I know uh, today you're you're running around. What um, the official tournament starts on Thursday. How much more work? I know there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, but what's your top priority now heading into before Thursday? Yeah. Oh, so today when I when I when I jump off of this call, I'm going to go over to the USDGC doubles and catch all the women teeing off. Um, you get some some coverage of that for Throw Pink and the championship because I mean it's the first year the women have been a part of it. So I want to see every single woman throw their very first disc on the very first tee of their experience. So I'm going to do that for about an hour and a half and then uh, going to make a commercial. Uh, hopefully it'll only take one take uh, or Jeff Panis might kill me. I usually panic as soon as he starts hitting record and we have to redo it over and over again. So, but yeah, tons of stuff. And then uh, I, I help set up the pro shop. So we'll be like putting together fixtures and getting the pro shop ready and putting all the merchandise out. And then Monday qualifying for the ladies, I'll do that. And then hopefully sometime Tuesday night, I'll get some stuff ready for the clinic. Cause once the championship starts, starts rolling, I don't really have time to get that ready. And I want to make sure those ladies have an amazing experience too. And then just coordinating with all my volunteers to, you know, to run the throw pink tent and be available. And usually, and like, maybe I can shout this out here. We have a, a hard time getting people to come out and do you just scoring for the first like two or three women's cards. People just don't like to get up early. So I'll be spending the next few days to like seeing if we can get some people to, you know, sacrifice some sleep for a few days to come get those, those first three cards, uh, you know, a score so the ladies play and don't have to worry about doing it. So just, you know, little things like that, some admin stuff, you know, boring office work. But already I need a nap just from hearing all the things, you're <laughs> about, honestly, but that is a really good point about, about getting, hopefully making the appeal to people out there come out and, and help out with the, with the early rounds. Cause I mean, these might be some women at the beginning of their career and, you know, you maybe say, Hey, I was there in 2022 when, when she was last person on the tee, but now look at her. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So I mean, not only that, with... go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, one of the things also to consider there is that, you know, if you come out and take one of the, take the score, live scoring off of one of the early cards, first and foremost, you get to be right there with the group. You're going to be a part of the group. They're going to, by the time it's over, you're going to have at least four new friends, maybe five, depending <laughs> on how big the group is, because you're going to be a part of the group. And you're going to be taking care of their scores. You're going to be part of the action. And then when that's over, you got the rest of the day to catch more action, to do whatever you want. There's lots of different opportunities. You can come and check out the vendor village. There's going to be big screen, a big screen over there beside the stage to watch action all day. Plus Sarah's going to have video screen in her tent. Uh, say that we're probably going to do the same thing for our tent uh, for Mace Man. And there's, there's just going to be a lot of good stuff to get involved in. So, you know, come out and get involved. We can definitely use the help. Yeah, free entry too. And you get to walk the course, burn some calories. So you can drink more beer. I mean, I don't understand how people say no. <laughs> right there. You just sold it for me. I'm booking my next flight down there. I <laughs> work it, work it. Go on down. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's just been a, a real pleasure talking to you and getting to know you. And we're all huge supporters, honestly. It's um, when I first heard this idea, throw pink. Honestly, my first reaction was I've been throwing pink since I started, but this is something really to get behind. And I urge everyone that is watching, listening, or catches us later in your own town, in your own locale, encourage women. You know, uh, if you, we all know somebody who's playing, encourage them to get involved. And sometimes people just need to be asked, hey, can you do this for us? And, you know, maybe they're shy. Maybe they don't know how to, how to involve themselves. And just maybe we just put a blanket invite. If you're interested, come talk to us. We're not unapproachable. Yeah, yeah. And not, and not to prolong the, the interview, but I think you nailed it. And that's what I tell a lot of TDs. They're like, oh, we welcome women. They're, they're welcome here. Yeah, but did you invite them? You know, and what you said is, I mean, that's it. Yeah, that's great that you welcome women, but let, but let them know. Hey, come on out, you know, so yeah. that, that's well said. Nice. Well, Sarah, I know you're super busy. Uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. Mace, you have any, any final words for our intrepid explorer over there? 
Oh no! Well, yeah, she's she's got plenty on her plate, so <laughs> I'm getting out of her way because you know, <laughs> I'm gonna see enough of him. She's got she... pointy elbows and stuff, you know. Well, I do have to say, Mace was worried you you might punch him at some point during this show. So that you've shown yeah. remarkable restraint already. Well, my grandma's probably going to watch, so I gotta I gotta be respectful. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's a great I, one of your one of your quotes that I wanted to talk about. I think uh, you had a great quote from your grandma there. Life's not fair, but good is good, and that's that's wisdom right there. So. <laughs> Just always uh, try to be good, and goodness will always will always prevail. Goodness will always shine forward. People will see the light, no matter how dim it burns. Right. 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 So keep spreading the light. Keep spreading the love. Keep doing what you do, Sarah. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Right on. Bye. See you later. All right. Well. Well, that's some. That's there's many exciting reasons to be at Rock Hill. Holy cow. No reason to stay home. And the wind, it looks like we're going to have decent weather. So come on, get in the car. I've said this for years and years and years. And I'm going to say it again and again and again. And if you're not, if you're not planning on being here next week and you're a disc golfer and you're like a fan and you're within five hours of here, you're not really a fan if you're not getting in the car and coming on, in my opinion, because it's five hours is nothing. And, and this is. This event keeps getting bigger and bigger, man. It's like each year is another reason why to come. And I mean, it's exciting. You talk about the vendor village and all these big screens that are going to be everywhere. It's it's truly like it's, you know, a recognized, established sporting event that is a global draw or at least a national draw. Well, and it's, you know, I've told lots of people this and I've told people this as recently as, you know, a couple of days ago, it's. Have you ever thought about it? If, if you're if you're a fan um, and you thought about coming out here just to come and spend the week, uh, you're not going to waste your time. You're not going to be disappointed. You're certainly not going to look back on it and go, man, I should have just stayed home and played all week, you know, because you're this is if, if you're really a fan then this is where you should be. And it's the things that are going to go on and, and the things you're going to see. You're not going to hear about them later. You're going to be right here. For, if you see them in person, you're going to be the one of the people talking about it, you know. And now a lot of people I know around here in Toronto, they get excited about uh, about championship week because they want to follow online. They can see it. They can see the action. I, I haven't really watched or paid attention to. I'm going to do it this year. But uh, can people follow? I think you have to pay a fee, a subscription fee to follow the, the live action, but they post up the previous day's action. Is that still um, the case? Now? Well, there will be live action. There will be a live. I've. I've See now, I'm gonna you're gonna get me misquoting. We might have to do a little homework right now and see what's up. But um, I'm pretty sure that your your uh, regular Disc Golf Pro Tour or your Disc Golf Network subscription gets you in with the USDGC this year, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, you know, I've known I've been made I've made a few mistakes in my time, but I think that that's the case. Well, it's certainly uh, anyone who's familiar with the course at all you know what a an amazing challenge it is just the course itself is is really well designed and then to see the top level players ripping through it people you've never seen before or heard of before comes and sometimes make up some of the most miraculous shots it's uh it's definitely it, it feels like in a way kind of like augusta you know it's the same course everybody battles it it's stretched out to its limits there's only one champ Gets to, but there's no green jacket. Maybe there should be. Well, we got the ring. We got the ring. Yeah, everybody gets a ring. So it's similar. Like you don't get the jacket at the time of the win, but get the ring. And when do they get present? a ring? You get a ring at, at, at the players' meeting next year for this year. And when is the players' meeting? Is it Wednesday night? Yeah, and it's outdoors here at the course. And so where are you, the Mace Man setting up a vendor's tent in the vendor's village? Yes. And how far, like how far a walk is that from there to the rest of the action? It's directly across the street from old seven C pad. Oh. So it's like where, where the edge village has been in the past. If you haven't been in a few years. I haven't been in a few years. Yeah. So it's where, well, it's where we used to have the, we used to have the, uh, we used to run the staff out of there as well. We have like a staff tent, all the carts and all that kind of stuff posted up over there. And now that stuff's all, 
that all takes place here behind the stone house, the UPS trailer and where we store all the tools and everything. And, um, and the, and the carts that we have will be parked over here. And then, um, everything for the vendor village is in that area where the edge village used to be slash, um, staff area. Speaking of carts, one of my favorite ever experiences at the USDGC was playing the Sunday fun day round with um, Bergie and we had a cart and man, that was just because it, it's a long course. There's long holes. It's a big, long loop. And oh, it's a cart, lot of work. It's just, oh, thank you, Bergie. It's a lot of work. So uh, Jonathan is he made it to Polly's mm -hmm. Island. OK. And yeah, again, everything. I th I think that everything's okay there. Um, they got the the hatches battened down, and then I don't know. I mean, like I know that like I saw a bunch of photos. Laurie po posted on Instagram of like steps and staircase landings out on the beach that were wiped away, but like the boardwalks over the the dunes seemed to be like seemed like they weren't all that damaged. But like the end of the Polly's Island Pier, I saw photos of that 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 part of it was gone too. But yeah, he got out there. Everything's good with that. Um, we'll we'll have him on here sometime in the next couple of days when he gets back into, into Rock Hill and he's settled and everything's comfortable. That's part of why, that's the entire reason why we haven't had Jonathan's uh, secondary interview on yet. But um, we will, uh, we'll get it up. We'll get that going here in the next day or two. Well, if, if Sarah is as busy as she is, Jonathan's going to be even busier because he's, he's wanted on all all calls so oh and there's no question about that but he'll he's you know he's already assured me that he's gonna that he's setting aside a little bit of time for us when he gets to a point that he can pull that off but you know it's uh, that's the thing too it, like this is a game and that was life and you know he needed to go be with his family and make sure that everything was in order there at home and 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 so that's you know that's part of the deal yeah and it'll uh you know that well that's also part of the deal too at 24 years he's um he's one of the best at at finding people to take tasks on and then he leaves those tasks with those people you know so that person comes in next year and they did that task last year well here you're doing that again this year and and you and, you, and you'll do it a little better and that's that's one of the things i've learned from him he goes all right brian we're going to do as best we can and the things we don't get to this year, then, you know, that's, that'll be the top of the list next year. And, and we'll do all those things we've already done and we'll add that stuff to the, to the mix for next year. So it just continues to get better and better. And, and he's, you know, I mean, it's, I'm, he hands things off to me. He hands things off to Joe. He hands things off to everybody and, and he finds a person to fill a role and then, and then he goes on and, finding another role and finds another person for that role too. And that's how come everything happens out here. And that's how come he can comfortably break away. Although he wasn't very comfortable with it until he finally, I think, sat in the car and drove off. But, you know, he can comfortably break away for a couple of days in the midst of the, one of the crunch weeks and um, run back home and handle things, handle his business at the house and take care of his family. And I mean, it, all we did was watch it rain while he was gone yesterday. I mean, it wasn't like we could do anything else. You know? <laughs> they they, they uh, postponed, delayed, canceled the first day of basically, actually, accurate, more accurate way of putting it is they canceled the final day of the doubles tournament and made it to where it was just a two day event instead of a three day event and just closed the course and everything yesterday. And it, Never quite got as bad as it was predicted weather-wise here. I mean, but it did rain steady all day, but we didn't see the big um, 60, 70 mile an hour gusts that were predicted or anything like that. So sounded like uh, Thursday was the much blustier day. When I was talking to you, I could barely hear you sometimes. Oh, yeah. And it was really, that was something else. I mean, it, and and that wasn't even that crazy. It was just 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts every now and then. But yeah, it was, you know, we had to go take shelter and hide just to talk on the phone. So for anyone trying to do metric math right there, 60 mile an hour winds, that's approaching 100 kilometer hour winds. And man, if they, that is a force of nature action right there. How the hell are you supposed to putt in that shit, you know? Well, you know, that's, and that's like, I ran into, uh, oh, geez, now I can't remember his name. Uh, Aaron, uh, Eric Oakley. 
I ran into him up at the shack and he was, he was getting ready to go play a practice round, but he was debating on whether there was any value in it. And I was like, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're just going to go over there and play and, and um, throw shots and then not necessarily be able to like, or are you going to throw yourself off? You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're making a transition into a, a, a way that you're not even going to end up playing. Yeah. Maybe next week. I mean, it's beautiful here today. I mean, it's, I, like honestly like it's beautiful like i hadn't seen it very many times in the last five to ten years because we've had i think it's been four out of five years where we had nasty nasty rain maybe it's five out of six because i think uh jeremy won i'm pretty sure jeremy coming won in 15 and we had to stop we didn't we only played four rounds that year because of another hurricane that that didn't come all the way in but it was warm enough that that some of the after effects it didn't take so long like it was part of the thing that killed this rain was it wasn't that warm around here it was like in the 50s yesterday it wasn't warm at all wow that yeah I, mean, I, think, I think the high was 56. revenge of the north it's, right there yeah so i mean it, it's from what i met i had dinner with russell schwartz last night and he told me that that was a big factor is that if it had been hot it would have been a lot different mm. You know, if it would have been 70, 80 degrees or even more before that storm hit right around here. But it's like a cold front came in from the north a little bit too, I think. So that's what, you know. that's what we're good at, bud. Cold fronts from the north. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now for you, the championship doesn't start till Thursday. Do you have any work to do regarding qualifying Monday, or is that just something happening in the background? I'm uh, I'm going to be emceeing the distance competition all day on Monday. Um, although maybe it's not an all day thing, it might possibly just be in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna for the first time this year, I'm gonna they're gonna have me over there with the PA from for the whole thing. We're gonna play some music. I'm gonna call their name out. Um, you know, make it a little bit more of a maybe a little bit more of a pressure moment. I don't know. I mean, it's- Think it's, about some roasts you can give them. Uh, well, that's the thing. That's the problem for me is like, and that's part of why I'm so interested. I'm, I'm not at all reluctant to, well, I'm not, that's not even a good way to put it. That, let me rephrase it. Like, I'm, I'm really interested in it just because, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a strange spot still where, you know, I don't know who a lot of these folks are, you know? I mean, I've been around forever, but those those people haven't. And so, a lot of the youngsters, uh, you know, I don't, youngsters, I sound so old, um, <laughs> but a lot of these young kids, you know, these, these 19, 20 year olds, you know, I don't, uh, well, I'll just tell you this story. I was at the Memorial earlier this year. Um, I believe it's hole nine is the last hole you play before you cross the road on Shelly Sharp. That's where they set up the, uh, set up that club gives away free food down there at the shelter right at the end there. So. There's that hole, and then there's uh, like 13 or 14 plays alongside it. And I walked, I'm not even going to be able to give this a good description unless you've really got a good visual of where I'm talking about. But basically, I probably walked 200 yards from the tee pad. No, not 200 yards, 200 feet from the tee pad down to where the next hole of oncoming the pin is, and it crosses the road to go onto the other holes, crosses the creek, that is. It took me two-thirds of the gallery to find someone that I knew so that I could ask, hey, I know those four people. I know who's on the lead card. I know two of them personally, so I know who they are. One of them was Macbeth, and I can't remember who the other one was off the top of my head, but I knew I knew they were – two of them were older players, and two of them were, you know, younger guys in their younger tw mid early 20s or whatever. And so um, I was like, I just wanted to talk to somebody that I knew and get them to tell me who those other – which – which name went with which body basically, because I didn't know half the card, yeah. you know? And so I've been trying really, trying hard to pay attention to that and, you know, watching coverage and stuff like that. But this is going to be one of my good opportunities where I can just go, okay, um, you know, I'm Brian Mace. I want to just want to introduce myself, but can you please tell me who you are and where you're from? And, you know, and that's going to play into the whole, whoever qualifies, I'm going to interview them early on but I'm going to have their information too. And then I'm going to know, and like going into Saturday, then I'm going to know a little bit more about them, where they come from, you know, how long they've been playing, what their first disc was. Mm -hmm. And I may not use all that information, but I'm going to have it. 
Totally. So, yeah. so tomorrow is is tomorrow is the distance qualifying? No, it's on Monday. Tomorrow is kind of an off day. So tomorrow, and then, and everybody then, stays home and watches football tomorrow and gets their last day. <laughs> all the locals. <laughs> this is what's confusing me because usually it started on when the championship started on Wednesday. It was done on Saturday, so you could have the the Sunday. Let's support the. Uh, What's their team there in Charlotte? I don't know. I don't know. If oh, the Panthers. Team. The Panthers. I knew it was some kind of cat. I knew it wasn't the Jaguars, okay? That's what I know about that. Yeah, it's not the Jaguars. So how's half the staff going to keep their mind in, in the championship Sunday when they're going to be trying to look at their phones and on the update? That's a long ways off. That's a long okay. ways off. <laughs> but the uh, distance competition, um, the finals is going to be on Saturday? No, the showcase is on Sunday. It's always right before the awards. Oh, okay. And is so it still the, the finals? The finals actually is on Monday. So it's so it's qualifying in the finals on Monday. And then oh, okay. we take um I think we decided we're taking four and three. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. That's still we still gotta still gotta finalize those details. But that's uh that'll all take place at the end. And so they still shoot across the pond. Yeah, the they still throw across the lake, and it's 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 a showcase. Do you guys um, still put up baskets on the other side? Uh huh. There will be a couple baskets. There's um, we have a sponsor from a generator company, an electrical generator company, and they um, they're giving up a couple of these generators, uh, a couple different for a couple different aspects of this event. And one of them is for a CTP, like in the bullseye or something, for the uh, on the final. Wow. Or on the showcase, like, excuse me, not on the final. And so the showcase, you're going to be working the mic as well, right? Hyping the crowd. Yeah, that's my that's one of my primary jobs at this event. That is hosting hosting the showcase and and the uh, hosting and emceeing the showcase and the and the awards. Um, Harold usually comes up and actually gives away you know, the, the awards and everything like that. And so I bring him up and just kind of stand by and then he does the talking and, and then I thank everybody for coming and everybody goes home. And then, then the balloon is burst and everybody deflates. It's like, oh. Good news about that though, is that's like 10 days, nine days away. It's true. We got a lot of excitement to go through. Nine days away. Um, but Tuesday, we're going to be back on the air. Good times uh, with Juliana. As our special yes. guest, maybe if Jonathan's floating around, he can hop in for a second or two. But um, will you? No, I think we're going to get him before her. Okay. I think we're going to think. Uh, I think that it's quite possible that we'll we'll either pin him down on Sunday night or Monday night. Okay. And um, it just depends on when he gets back. Juliana, are we going to? She's on site, right? Yeah, I believe so. Should be. Are we going to have her come to the to the stone house or will she be? Let me talk to her about that and see what's up. Because that would be cool. That was that was great to have you and Sarah side by side. And, and you know, the the energy and, and the instantaneity of the communications was just really great. Once we got the the first 20 minutes of the show, we're bamboozled by the microphone. But we dialed it up. Yeah, I did, you know what I you know what I did to fix that? What's that? I moved the I moved the laptop over. <laughs> I'm an audio specialist. There you go. For all your audio needs, call May Smith. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that was fun. Definitely awesome to talk to Sarah. She's a great, great person. And like I say, uh, her Instagram account is is filled with lots of great inspirational photographs, videos, and 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 text as well. She's uh She's someone who's fighting the good fight, spreading the light, and uh, definitely someone who's on the right side of history when it comes to virtually everything that she's doing. Um, good call on getting her, and hopefully we're going to have some people out there who are going to follow up and have a throw pink event th themselves. I know here in Toronto, I'm going to be really hard, working really hard to get the ladies, get the women involved in that. Right on. All right, dude. Well, that's um, that's pretty much what I got going on for now and um we'll let you know what's next as are you still you still staying at the same hotel we always stay at yeah they still have that food truck parked outside 
The taco food truck? truck. The no, taco no, truck? No, no. Oh, man. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a different hotel. Oh, we're, okay. we're, we're back at the tournament hotel now. Okay, not the, what was that? I don't even know what Microtel. that was. Microtel, that's right. That was a great food truck, though. You missed out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. There's so many other food opportunities in this town. Hey, what about that restaurant we always used to go to, the Mexican restaurant? Is that still open? The one right across Cherry Road? It's on, uh, on the main highway that, or the main Oh, road yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm down, still there. There's still, some things haven't changed. Nice. Cause, some uh, things have definitely changed. Big bowl of queso and, a, and an even bigger bowl of my frozen margarita was just the spot right there. Fish bowl. <laughs> yeah. Like a shark. All right, buddy. Good to talk to you, pal. Always good to see you. And um, good times. Good times. Even if it was for more than an hour, it's always good times. Without a doubt. Yeah, buddy. Uh, um, I'll talk to you more real soon. Yeah, buddy. All right. See you. See you, pal.